You know, any boxing fan, a fan of Joe Frazier and Ali can tell you, after the thrill in Manila, that disastrous fight for both of them where he both almost died in the ring, where Ali barely won a TKO in the 15th round, when uh, Frazier's corner man didn't want to go out because, you know, he was good, probably going to blind or, or paralyzed. We all said, hey, you know, uh, this is time for Ali and Frazier maybe to retire so they can counter money and, you know, counter children, whatever you want to think. But this is what happened. We had rumors weeks after the Manila fight that Ali was going to get back in the ring with someone we never heard of, a Belgian called Jean-Pierre Coupin. Now, their fight was at the Roberto Clemente Coliseum in Puerto Rico on February 20th, 1976. Now, by my knowledge, I had a limited uh, television broadcast in North America, but was shown quite a bit around the world. Now, uh, the fight itself wasn't much. Ali won by knockout in the fifth round. But there was a lot of controversy about the fight. Ali went to a coughing fit in the first round and not say threw up his own piece, but spat it out. And uh, there was also some indication in interviews of Koopman after the fight. He may have been drunk while the fight was going on. Now, he denied claims after the contest that he'd been drinking champagne before the fight, but confirmed that he had drunk some champagne during the fight to help him move faster and to feel euphoric. Uh, don't know if it's sort of like the peppermint schnapps with Aaron Pryor versus Arguello, we don't know. Now, the bout bo bo took place in Puerto Rico at Roberto Clemente Coliseum and uh, eventually was broadcast on CBS not ABC, in front of 40 million viewers. Now, in the ring during the introduction, Koopman, who, uh, who was from Belgium, you know, typical nice pretty people from Belgium, smiled easily while Ali stared at him. In his orange robe with a small black line over his left breast, uh, Koopman sat on the stool in his corner and appeared to enjoy Ali's attempt at psych. But when the bell rang, the Belgian stopped smiling. He was giving up 20 pounds in the fight. Ali uh, weighed in at one of his heaviest at 226, while uh, uh, Koopman was 206 with a 5-inch, uh, with Ali having a 5-inch advantage in reach. In addition to the advantage and the skill and the experience, Koopman was very lightly regarded. Now, in the first round, Ali uh, coughed uh, uh, twice, again midway through the round, then coughed up his mouthpiece near the end of the round. Now, Ali was, uh, according to published reports, was recovering from a recent battle with the flu. Now, through four rounds, Ali was fighting in a flat foot stance, peppering Koopan with a flurry, with a flurry of punches. In the fi fifth, the champion started to dance, circling to his left and to his right, and confusing Koopan with backhanded jabs. Then Ali threw a huge uppercut. Now, with a combination of punches, accompanied by a right uppercut, the 29-year-old challenger toppled into the ropes. Trying to regain his equilibrium, Koopan wobbled back into the canvas uh, in apparent delayed reaction from the punch. Koopman was uh, eventually covered out by referee Ismael Quinones Falou at 2 minutes and 46 seconds of the round. The referee and the two judges, Ismael Fernandez and Roberto Ramirez, each had awarded Ali a 10-9 advantage on points in each of the first four rounds. Moments later, Koopman was dragged to his Cooper uh, corner with Ali helping. Uh, some 20 minutes after the bout, Ali appeared in the interview area dressed and relax. So we know why that Ali was fighting against Koopman, but you're saying to yourself, what, what justified Koopman having a world title fight? Now, uh, he was Flemish by ancestry, right? And uh, uh, was known for the, the nightlife, anyway. Now, um, it was uh, a, a strange thing that what happened. He was a long-time contender. He fought uh, in the 1971 European Championships uh, and eventually turned professional in 1972. Now, most of his early bouts were in Belgium. Now, you're wondering why he, he got a, a title shot. Well, here, here's the deal. There was a whole bunch of uh, top 25 contenders he had uh, taken on, but Jan Lubers, Terry Daniels, uh, Rudy Lubbers, who he lost to, Adriana Ro Rosati, but he was fighting again a lot in Belgium. Now, when he eventually fought Ali, he, he really was limited to Belgium. All these fights were in Belgium, except for one that was held in Oslo, where he lost to a, a Norwegian fighter in his fifth fight. But after he lost to Ali, 
he he had a weird uh, way to go. He fought uh, the Canadian, uh, what do you call it, secondary contender George Rome. He fought Lucian Rodriguez twice, losing twice. And he fought, of all people, Alfredo Evangelista for the EBU heavyweight title, which eventually led to Evangelista getting that uh, title shot against Ali. And um, uh, yeah, yeah, it's hard to, to really understand what happened in his career, and I tell you, uh, I tell you why. He had fought up until 1981 and decided to make a comeback 18 years later against a fighter called Freddy de Capel which was a majority decision in the sixth round. So uh, it was a weird career, but like I said, he was fighting primarily again in Belgium, uh, Antwerp, West Flanders, Brussels, uh, you know, uh, Liege, uh, a lot of the, uh, and also fought a fighting in Holland, Robert, uh, Rotterdam. So it's the first time he fought outside pretty well of Europe, but again, he fought uh, in Belgium. So, to my knowledge, ladies and gentlemen, he's pretty well the highest ranked pro fighter in the heavyweight ranks from Belgium. And like I said, he wasn't a tomato can, he had some skill. But like I said, uh, you know, but I saw the fight against Evangelista, if you can believe that. And Evangelista didn't do much but in his career, but he knocked out, again, him in the... Uh, 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 in the um, uh, the first round, this was 1977. But again, he was EBU champion against a very tough nut, Jose Maria Manuel Yurtain, which was one of the most underrated fighters of his era. Lost the, uh, the EBU title, Lucian Rodriguez, and then uh, again uh, uh, for the EBU title again. Why would I be fighting a guy from Argentina for the title? I don't I don't know, because obviously Argentina is not uh, you know part of Europe. Anyway. Uh, if you can find a fight, it's, it's on there, but for 25 minutes, it's a good break in your day. So over the next couple of weeks on our podcast channel, we're going to be looking at doing podcasts of some of Ali's lesser contenders, including Richard Dunn, a few other fighters like that, uh, Al Blue Lewis, maybe, if I can find more details. You know, just to, because Ali had uh, a whole bunch of Joe Lewis tomato can fights, Bugner, Ronnie Lyle, uh, different fighters like that, even before he won the title back after losing to Frazier. He took on everybody. Ali liked to keep busy. But like I said, uh, 220 pounds, he could have killed him if he was in shape. And uh, the announcer for CBS, I'm not sure who, uh, Chris Schinkel maybe, or whoever was uh, CBS at the time, said that Ali didn't want to hurt him. That's why he knocked him out early. I think it sums it up right there. And he liked fighting Canadians, I know that. So he fought a couple of Canadians. So that's the story of Ali. A little bit of background job here, Coopin. If you like what we're doing here with our uh, uh, Vintage Boxing Podcast, let us know. And if you're a fan of Jean Pierre, all you can say, he fought for the world title, European champion, fought top 20 contenders, and like I said, uh, you know, 44 years later, we're still talking about him. So, gotta be good. Thanks for listening. Bye.